What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to keep your Raspberry Pi 4 much cooler by installing new USB 3 host firmware. This was released officially by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And basically what this does is save around 300 milliwatts of power to the USB 3 host, in turn keeping the whole board a lot cooler. You can expect temp drops from 3 to 5 degrees Celsius in my experience. Right now I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model and as you can see I'm at 62 degrees Celsius and this is just at idle right now. I do not have a heatsink on my Raspberry Pi. This will drop after I install the firmware because I've tested this on my Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model. Now it's really easy to install. I'm going to leave a link to the official Raspberry Pi forum where this was released and it shows you exactly how to do it. I've also created a text file that's just going to make it a lot easier. You can copy and paste all of this into Terminal. This will also be listed in the description. You can download it from Dropbox. Before we get started, I do want to mention that this isn't going to magically make your Raspberry Pi run at 20 degrees Celsius all the time. You will still experience thermal throttles under heavy, heavy load unless you have a nice heat sink on the Raspberry Pi 4. That's just how it is. This little chip gets hot. So let's go ahead and install the firmware. The first thing we need to do is download the package. You can get it from the official forum here, or I've also listed the link in the text file. This is going to contain the new firmware and the original firmware, and we can always go back to the original if you ever run into problems. I'll show you how to do that by the end of this video. It's also listed in the document that you can download. We're going to download this. It's going to go directly into our downloads folder. And I'll show you that right now. VL805 update zip. We now need to extract the firmware and install it. We're going to open up a terminal window. And from within the terminal, we need to navigate to our download section. So we can type in CD downloads with a capital D to get there. We're now in our download section. It's time to extract the firmware from that zip. You can copy and paste from this file here. Press enter. We've now extracted it. If we take a look at that one more time, we'll see that we've extracted it directly inside of the downloads folder so we don't need to navigate anywhere else. Now we need to take ownership of that VL805 file or the firmware file. We're going to chmod this. Now we're going to install it. And see, we're still in our downloads folder. Successfully reprogram. So we now have the new firmware. All we need to do is reboot. So I'm going to type in sudo reboot. So after our reboot is complete, we now have the new firmware installed. I've actually let mine sit for about four minutes just to cool off from the old firmware. And as you can see here, we're idling around 58, 59 degrees Celsius. So for me, just installing this firmware dropped my idle temps by five degrees Celsius, five or six, give or take a little bit here or there. And it will jump up. This is not going to keep your Raspberry Pi totally cool under load. This will still thermal throttle and you will need a heat sink on your Pi eventually. These Pi 4s just run hot. So if you ever want to go back to the stock firmware for any reason, you can go back by using these two commands here. Make sure you still have that file extracted in your downloads folder. Run both of these. You'll be on the stock included firmware for the first wave of the Raspberry Pi 4s. Another cool thing is I'm watching my temp in real time every one second. I've also included it here. You can watch every one second if you want to check your temps. You can also view the CPU speed every one second if you want to. So you're just going to open up a terminal, copy this here, paste it right in the terminal. And that'll give us our temperature every one second. This is real time. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will leave links to everything I mentioned in the description, including this text file that you can download from Dropbox. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.